It's Wednesday Debate Live with Tagreed Hussain here on Nile TV International. Well, uh, tonight we are definitely talking in standing and in solidarity with uh, Palestine. Egypt's immediate and serious support to the Palestinians, of course, is no surprise, especially at such terrifying and heartbreaking situations, reflecting the long-standing and the deeply rooted ties between the two people and their leadership. In a press conference that was held today with the German Chancellor of Scholz, uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi emphasized Egypt's unwavering support for the Palestinian cause, as well as his firm rejection of any attempts to displace the Palestinian people or to force them off their land, whether to Sinai or to anywhere else, coming at the expense of the whole region, and pointing out that Egypt will remain supporting the legitimate Palestinians' right to their land. The president's discussions with the German chancellor earlier in the day dealt with the military confrontations between the Israeli and the Palestinian sides, the military escalation in Gaza that actually claimed the lives of thousands of civilians on both uh, sides. No doubt that Egypt is continuing its unwavering support to the Palestinian cause along with containing uh, the situation in Palestine in general and the Gaza Strip in particular that earned uh, definitely its place in history books. Tonight, along with our veteran politician and professor at AUC, Dr. Mohammed Nagib Abu Zaid, will be reading together the headlines, the president's statements uh, during the press conference with the German chancellor and the tireless efforts that has been exerted by Egypt uh, in order to ease the tension and also the efforts to uh, provide the humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza and how the continuation of the current uh, military operations in Gaza will have definitely security and humanitarian repercussions for the whole region. Before we delve into the headlines, uh, we'll see the report. Thank you, Dr. Abu Zaid, so much for coming uh, tonight. And together we'll be, uh, as I said, reading Egypt's efforts to hold the escalation in the situation. Thank you for having me. The report, and we'll be back. Egypt continues deploying efforts to hold the ongoing escalation in Gaza and save the lives of innocent civilians. In this regard, Egypt has been consulting with regional and international parties to immediately deliver humanitarian aid to Gaza residents. Throughout this week, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has received phone calls from world leaders discussing the ongoing military escalation in the Gaza Strip and stressing the necessity of concerting international efforts to encourage the warring parties to accomplish pacification in order to prevent more human losses among civilians as well as the extension of security repercussions to the entire region. In his phone call yesterday with Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, President Assisi stipulated that the international community must push towards the delivery of humanitarian aid to Palestinians in Gaza Strip. He also underscored tackling the root causes of the escalation by accomplishing a fair and comprehensive solution to the Palestinian cause. As part of the ongoing consultations regarding developments in the Gaza Strip, President Assisi received yesterday a phone call from the Cypriot President, Nikos Christodoulides, where the two leaders agreed on the severity of the humanitarian repercussions on civilians, as well as the consequences of expanding the circle of conflict on the stability of the region. In the same respect, President Abdel Fattah Assisi received a phone call from U.S. President Joe Biden on Monday tackling regional situation and the military escalation between the Palestinians and Israelis. According to the Egyptian presidency, President Sisi and Biden stated that the situation is critical and it is necessary to contain it in a way preventing the expansion of violence and threats to regional security and stability. President Sisi and Biden also discussed the efforts exerted to revive the peace process. Besides keeping on the consultation and coordination, over the ongoing crisis during the coming period. In the same context, President Assisi received the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, on Sunday. During the meeting, the two sides underscored commitment to strengthening the long-standing strategic partnership between Egypt and the U.S., confirming that it represents a cornerstone for maintaining security and stability in the region. 
President Assisi and U.S. Secretary of State Blinken. Also, President Assisi received phone calls from Prime Minister of Italy, Giorgia Meloni, and Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, discussing ways to contain the ongoing escalation in Gaza. In a phone call on Monday, President Assisi and Russian President Vladimir Putin reviewed diplomatic efforts underway to contain the situation in Gaza and prevent the expansion of the violence and conflict, which jeopardized security and stability in the region, affirming the need to prioritize the protection of civilians in Gaza, highlighting the gravity of the humanitarian conditions and the necessity of providing safe access to humanitarian and relief aid urgently. Also, in a meeting with France's Foreign Minister Catherine Colonna in Cairo on Monday, President Sisi emphasized the imperative need to de-escalate the Israeli offensive in Gaza, reiterating rejection of collective punishment policies against civilians in the Gaza Strip, including blockade, starvation and forced displacement. Following a National Security Council meeting held in Cairo and headed by President Abdel Fattah Sisi on Sunday, and as part of the Egyptian attempts to de-escalate the situation and protect civilians in Gaza, in collaboration with regional and international partners, Egypt will host an international summit next Saturday to discuss the recent developments in Gaza and address the future of the Palestinian cause. <laughs> Professor Abu Zaid, the president earlier in the day in the press conference with the, the German chancellor, had of course uh, uh, condemned uh, with deep sorrow uh, the uh, uh, victims of the brutal uh, attack that was at uh, the hospital of Al, Al Ahli uh, Baptist Hospital. This uh, is definitely a flagrant violation to the international law and the president chose those words that with deep sorrow to express this. I guess it has a special significance to start off the press conference with the uh, expression of sorrow and condemnation for what has happened yesterday. The brutal attack. Of course. Of course, one would always expect uh, the president, in his wisdom, that he starts his speech uh, by condemning such a barbarian, tragic attack. Uh, and I have to say that this is not the only attack, and we have been seeing for days uh, such attacks happening on a massive scale, and the whole world actually is horrified from what's going on. And uh, we all wish that this stops and stops sooner than later because it's really going to be uh, an explosive uh, 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 tragedy not only within the limit of Gaza, uh, Palestine, neighboring countries and so on but it could extend well beyond that. Uh, and I have to say that, that the, the leaders of the world have responded to that message and also the German Chancellor uh, was very much sympathizing with that and condemning this. Uh, I also know that even, even New York itself one of, one of the, 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 the icons of the United States itself. There has been some serious condemnation of this attack and of all what's going on, and therefore Egypt's role and the president's role in, in particular in this regard uh, is invaluable and uh, is well appreciated as tough, as difficult, as complicated, complicated as it is, but Egypt plays its role that has always been playing with respect to, to the uh, Palestinian cause. Yes, definitely. Egypt is playing uh, its role, as you've said, with respect to the Palestinian cause. And this has been uh, throughout history in Egypt's stances. Uh, we declared definitely a three-day uh, national mourning yes. that was declared by the president across the Arab Republic of Egypt in response to the tragic incidents that has happened yesterday. Those are messages that Egypt sends throughout the whole world in condemnation definitely. to the tragic incidents. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. And uh, as in your nice report, you see the number of world leaders uh, mm -hmm. contacting and communicating with, with, with our president, uh, our foreign minister, our foreign policy in general, mm -hmm. diplomacy at its finest uh, level and its toughest 
time level. I mean, you, you wouldn't see that kind of situation uh, that often in history. Uh, one would say, one, people actually start comparing what's happening now with what was happening uh, in the early uh, 1960s uh, in the between, the between Russia, between Soviet Union and, and the United States. Uh, it's that complicated of a situation. As a matter of fact, now it's even more complicated because of the number of the countries involved uh, and the uh, dire impact that could touch each and every one uh, from that scale. Uh, I have also to point out to the viewers, and that's my, my opinion, which I think uh, is based on evidence, we see in many capitals of the world some reactions for that, uh, for, for this crisis. So my, my fear is that that does not only limit itself or render itself to the geographic boundaries of where the crisis are but, or is, but it will continue like, 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 like a fire into other parts in the world, mm -hmm. something we wish that it doesn't happen and we wish it will be contained uh, sooner rather than later. Yes, exactly. And those also were uh, the words reiterated by His Excellency earlier that it could li like transcend barriers and would have uh, definitely repercussions on the whole region. Exactly. What are the uh, scenarios that you are expecting, Professor Abu Zaid, seeing bearing into consideration what has happened actually uh, yesterday, uh, that flagrant uh, violation on the unarmed civilians and the massacre that has happened at Al Ahli Baptist mm -hmm. Hospital. Uh, Egypt, of course, rejects uh, the displacement of the Palestinians from, them, from their land. And this is a very important point because uh, we are stressing that the Palestinian cause is the mother of all yes. causes. Yes. Actually, you said it very eloquently, and also the president prior to that said it a few days ago, that's the mother or the core mm -hmm. uh, issue uh, in, in the region. Um, what I see, and actually it's mixed with hope, because predicting is, is, is quite a difficult task in a complicated situation as such. Uh, but analyzing it calmly, uh, as difficult as that is in, in these difficult situations, uh, or, or uh, bloodshed everywhere and, and countries and, and different parties are starting to, 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 to wave the, the, and the threats of, of war here and there. First of all, and the absolute priority is to cease fire, to stop the, the, the bombing, to stop the fire. Everyone should stop firing. People are dying, human beings are dying. So fire, rockets, uh, bombardment should stop. And more importantly, now, not next hour, not next day. The aids, the, 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 the support for the Palestinian uh, people, uh, whether medical, whether food, whether water, whether, whether running back the electricity. Uh, the viewers and myself, when we lose uh, electricity or water one hour at our home, we revolve around ourselves. Now a whole country, perhaps the first time, or a whole big region, first time in history, is being under siege and being cut from water, from, 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 from electricity, from uh, medication, and, and they are even losing the, the, their medic and paramedic staff. So that the, the support from Egypt uh, and from other countries, I have to say other countries are sending their support to Egypt or through Egypt. I have seen today an aerial picture for the convoy of, of uh, trucks and loads and uh, uh, waiting or awaiting for the, for the, to enter from uh, Rafah, um, yeah. and I, I have to say when I looked at the picture carefully, uh, of course very long, uh, impressive, and I mean by impressive, impressive in in the size, and we really wanted to reach the the, the Gaza people, the Palestinian people, but at the very beginning there are lines of of ambulance cars, perhaps mm -hmm. carrying. Uh, blood transfusion uh, equipment and, and, and uh, some medical equipment and of course that that's a priority from the collapsing and deteriorating uh, situation in, in, uh, in Gaza. So my reading for the situation, this has to happen and you said it in a very nice way uh, minutes ago, this whole situation as tragic as it is wouldn't have happened had we had true peace, had we had the, the, the two-state solution that, that we did not invent, that the whole world supported at some time and point in Oslo, and mm -hmm. people signed these accords. So this is a serious uh, reminder of having to reach that. Otherwise, this conflict and this crisis will continue from one generation to another, and it will continue like that, which something neither party or no party would want to see. 
Uh, definitely. The president said that Egypt had not closed the Rafah border crossing. However, uh, definitely the airstrikes, the Israeli airstrikes had on the uh, Palestinian side of the crossing had hindered uh, actually its work. And uh, this is the gateway. So it's Egypt's national security, which is a red line, mm -hmm. isn't it? Uh, without any question. Mm -hmm. And the president in a very affirmative way and I, I, as I was coming here to this uh, show, uh, I heard and seen, maybe still ongoing, um, the, uh, the Egyptian parliament in full, sub Egyptian parliament is, support, is, is the, the representative yeah. of the Egyptian, is in full uh, uh, unquestionable support for the president's steps in this regard. And the most important part, not to uh, create a new vacuum, not, not, to, not to dismantle the, the, the Palestinian cause and, and move people geographically from one location to another and create the problem elsewhere and continues like that. So uh, yes, it's, uh, Egypt is, is willing to do that. Uh, I'm not sure how accurate what I'm going to say is, but on my way coming here also, I heard that the, 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 the Israelis are saying that they wouldn't mind the support to reach the Palestinians as long as it's water, uh, medication, and food, and so on. Mm -hmm. I hope as we speak that th this, uh, these uh, aids and support will reach mm -hmm. the Palestinian people. Mm -hmm. It's something that we definitely want to see and want to see it happening. And I think things will come down a little bit if that takes place. Yes, uh, many important messages actually uh, in His Excellency President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi's uh, press conference earlier in the day with the German Chancellor. The President said that the displacement of the Palestinians to Sinai means transferring the attacks against Israel to Egyptian territories, which threatens actually the peace between uh, Israel and a country of 105 million people. And uh, that is a very important issue and a very important message, Professor. Yes, it's a very important message. And mm. that has been echoed also, if I'm not mistaken, uh, by the King of Jordan because there was other <coughs> talks about the West Bank yeah. to, to, to be taken and, and, and it was also a uh, strong echoing what President Sisi has mentioned. So it's unquestionably uh, uh, rejected. Uh, the, the, the displacement is exactly the ending or the, the, the start of the ending of the Palestinian cause. Mm -hmm. People in the world have to, to wisen up and wisen by trying to contain a tragedy not from happening, it already happened, but to continue from going and extending everywhere to touch God knows who and for how long. Uh, what needs to be done is to stop, to cease fire, to take care of the wounded and to try to find some humanitarian solutions for all these people who have been without a shelter in their homeland, in their, in their land where, where they belong. And then we start immediate uh, declaration of the two-state solution with guarantees, international guarantees that conflicts will not happen again. I don't think there is any way out other than that. And I'm so pleased to say, uh, on my way again coming here listening to, to international news, I started hearing that from Europe, from the US, that, that everybody sees that that's the only way out. Yes, hopefully. And uh, the president said that, that the continuation of the current military operations will result in security and humanitarian repercussions. We're discussing here on the debate uh, the security repercussions, the way out, what are the expected scenarios, how about the upcoming period, how about uh, the aid reaching uh, the Palestinians and, and more on Altiv International. Stay tuned.
Uh, well, welcome back. Emphasizing solidarity with Palestine, the president stated that if necessary, I can ask the Egyptians to come out and express the rejection of the refuge idea. And then you are going to see millions of Egyptians demonstrating as an expression of their rejection of this displacement of the Palestinians from Gaza. And uh, definitely this uh, is a very important message among the press conference. Uh, uh, Professor Abu Zaid, reflecting, of course, the Egyptians' will and the Egyptians' solidarity with the Palestinians. Um, definitely, the first thing I get from this message, uh, His Excellency's uh, confidence in the Egyptian people and the Egyptian people uh, uh, reading uh, and understanding of the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, the Palestine cause has been our case, our cause for decades and decades and decades. So it's not only this situation that will alert us to what uh, is happening in Palestine and the consequences of that. So that's the first part, his own and his excellency, you know, confidence in the Egyptian people. And the second thing, as I just said, yes, look at the, the parliament. I haven't seen one single representative who was going otherwise or having otherwise. And for those who m could even talk about it, no humanitarian support the trucks and the, the loads are waiting to enter Gaza to help the Palestinian people but it's not helping the Palestinian people nor their cause is to evacuate them and displace them from one place to another we all know that even as engineers you displace or replace the problem from part A to part B then you're just not solving it, it you're just putting it elsewhere for other people to deal with it and maybe the same parties will deal with it so it's it's a wise and it's a true message and in my own view there, there wouldn't even need for that kind of, 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 of uh, uh, show of support because it's very clear and when I talk to people everywhere I haven't seen a single Egyptian with their friend with their colleague with their some layman I meet in the city here or there without saying let's support the president let's back up our effort diplomatic effort let's try to resolve this situation but not evacuate, not displace, not help the, 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 the different other parties to have the Palestinians elsewhere. That doesn't help anyone. Yes, it doesn't help anymore. And it doesn't help anymore uh, also any sort of liquidation of the cause itself, of the Palestinian cause itself. Yes. Uh, uh, let's think wh why people think about this now. Mm -hmm. Because, because uh, I think the, what's happening recently has been a very true, as I said, awakening of the Palestinian cause. They need to do this solution. Mm -hmm. So immediately the first thing to say, okay, let's put it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's neither wise nor, nor something realistic that will happen. And I have to send a message of support. Palestinian people are strong and amid or in the midst of all this suffering. I know them that they love their country. They are not going to allow this to happen to them and to their future generations with all the heavy losses they are paying every day. Mm -hmm. There is no country in the world that, that has been suffering like the Palestinian suffering for decades. So it's yeah. a very strong message and uh, the support goes as genuine as it can be. And uh, again, all the hopes is to contain this crisis and to move it forward into a peaceful, stable and sustainable solution. Yeah, there is another solution which the president has mentioned, like the Negev yes, district. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, His Excellency said that this might be a solution if Israel is thinking of uh, this sense of displacement. Uh, I smiled when I read that, actually. I smiled because uh, in the middle of this tragedy, uh, a little smile, uh, because uh, when you want to solve a problem, you want to put the people in other countries, okay, you are... You have it in your own country? You, 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 mm -hmm. you have it on your own. Yeah. And actually, if you want to solve the solution, if the Israeli people, I, I would hope they have the wisdom. Of course, there is a sense of anger and reaction and so on, but when, when things come down a little bit, they have to think of their own kids, their own generation. If they want really to live in peace, then mm -hmm. they have to go back to the boundaries of 1967, and, and establish the two state solutions that has been talked about internationally, as I said, and one American US uh, president to another. It's been going on going one generation after the other without being realized. Mm -hmm. and, and let's ask ourselves and the world peacefully and calmly, 
what do you expect it will happen if it continues like that? Of okay. course, some I don't want to call it even unpleasant. It's, it's tragic. Yeah. Let's here and there. And mm -hmm. we don't want that to continue in our region. Yeah. Egypt is exerting uh, tremendous efforts, Professor, and contacts with leaders, the president contacting leaders, and leaders contacting His Excellency uh, throughout the day since the crisis has erupted in order uh, to reach a solution and to coordinate uh, efforts. How do you see this uh, uh, important and pivotal role that is played by Egypt diplomatically in order to contain the crisis? Okay. Um, without sounding flattering, uh, uh, to His Excellency, w w I, I want to send him a sincere greeting uh, and message of support f from me and from everyone I said and met why leaders are being tested and being examined by very tough situations. Although our president had that already at the beginning of his presidency and prior to that when he was the, 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 the Minister of Defense and, and all this kind of, of of, of hard times you had to go through and, and, and to combat all these difficulties, that's another situation where we needed not only Egypt, the region needed a leader who would try to be firm, in control, and at the same time has the wisdom to work with all these parties. And why all these ministers, prime ministers, actually presidents and kings are contacting uh, the president, not only because of the geographic boundaries between Egypt and, and, and Gaza, and Israel on the other hand, but it's also because of the confidence in the role that Egypt can, can play. Egypt, the hundred plus millions, with its strong army, with its eloquent diplomacy, definitely, and with its history, with its history and, and heavy involvement uh, in the region, is perhaps the most trusted and most capable player to try to put hands in hands with all parties and work this thing together. My understanding is there is going to be perhaps Saturday an, uh, uh, a summit or, or a meeting in this uh, regard, or if, if this is still on the agenda. But definitely, even without this meeting, it's happening every day. And I haven't heard of a major leader uh, of the world who hasn't contacted Egypt in the past few days to try to resolve this issue. Yes, uh, uh, among definitely the leaders that uh, His Excellency has uh, contacted, being on the same wavelength, Jordan's King Abdullah II has also issued a warning uh, against the possibility of uh, a refugee influx from the Gaza Strip that is currently under the severe Israeli bombardment uh, towards Jordan and Egypt. And in a press conference, uh, King Abdullah said the same words that yes. no refugees in Jordan, no refugee, refugees in Egypt. Yes, uh, th actually, that's what I refer to as echoing what our president uh, mentioned. Yeah. Uh, also, I, I learned, and again, uh, in the middle of all of these news, one has to be very sure, but I, I, I learned that President Biden, he cont on his way back to the U.S., he contacted President Sisi and, and, and tried to coordinate matter and perhaps had discussions uh, to try to resolve this issue in light of that. All of that are indication how important Egypt is, which, which actually we don't need evidence for that has been always the case, uh, as well as the pivotal role that Egypt has to play and will play and is playing in this regard. Uh, let's hope that this thing in the coming few days will, will, will come down significantly and th the, the voice of wisdom uh, will, will, will overshadow any other uh, uh, a retaliation or, or, or fire or gunpowder uh, in the region. Yes, hopefully it does. And uh, w w well, throughout 50 years or even more, we find that uh, there has been more than one actually uh, massacre on behalf of the Israelis that had provoked outrage and a sense of condemnation. Uh, and the very much incident brings back uh, the Israeli war crimes that the bombardment of the Bahr al Bar uh, primary school, school yes. before. And uh, again, we have here. The, yes, exactly. And once again, yesterday is going also to be engraved in the history books. So uh, we, we do have still on the other side the will and the sense of determination on, the pal uh, on behalf of the Palestinian people that Professor Abu Zaid was uh, actually. Uh, uh, linking and indicating another, of course, spirit of will is the will of October. Yes. The will of October victory that 
uh, actually, we are always remembering those scenes with pride. You are also, Professor, remembering those scenes with pride. Yes, uh, definitely. With memories of pride with uh, your late uh, father. Yes. Your late dad and uh, Professor Abu Zaid's dad took part in October War. And uh, the Professor Abu Zaid was very much lucky to get the chance to accompany his dad uh, to uh, some of the sites at Suez, perhaps, when yes. there was a, a ceasefire. Yes. So from this spirit of will and this sense of determination that we're talking about, uh, that is there with, on the mind and in the heart of every Palestinian, to this sense of will that has helped us achieve victory in October. And for you specifically, when you remember those moments. Um, this is a very important and for me emotional question as well, because the, the can easily bridge 50 years of one life, uh, one's life just over few days and few, um, let's say, uh, incidents and events as serious as they are uh, that are taking place. Uh, and that's another reason why my generation and myself and actually the whole of Egypt is in a better situation to understand what is going on. We had also had our land occupied and we have struggled to, to liberate our lands and a, a, a heroic generation, uh, I, I don't want to talk only about my father, but all his generation who paid an, an, an unprecedented price to try to liberate this land and we succeeded. And I have to say, because of this important question that you raised and, and uh, personal as well for me, is that we had the war, but then at the end we had the peace talks and things went from there into uh, liberating fully our land. So yes, uh, I, I do remember that. I had, I, I was a very young boy when, when my father, actually it was, it was something, uh, uh, you know, I, I am his only son and my mother approved that I would go with we a friend. We can see here the letter that yes, uh, yes, yes. your father sent you. Yes. With pride, of course. Yes, of mm. course. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for that. And, and actually, I, I feel personally proud of this because I managed after 50 years to remember th these important moments. And actually, uh, it's, uh, it's something that uh, I'm glad that, that people have. Uh, and this uh, is, uh, this is uh, the essay that was at Al Ahram that yes. has uh, portrayed exactly. uh, the heroic deeds of exactly. uh, late uh, Mohammed Abu Zid, Thank who you. was uh, actually yes. among uh, Egypt's heroes achieving victory. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. The, the, the important thing I want to, to share with you and the viewers, particularly the younger generation, how was my dad was talking to me in this letter? How was he trying to talk to me as if I'm a grown-up man and telling me what his dad mission is to liberate the land, to make me proud that he's done that? Yeah. This is the sense of belonging, you know? Exactly. This is the sense of, uh, of having, a, uh, upgrading a child who has Egypt in his heart and mind. Exactly. Mm. And in, in, in the letter also, he's telling me that I also have a part or a role to play. While he's fighting mm -hmm. in the war, I have to concentrate succeed. on my study, succeed, be a good example for people around me. So, so uh, and, and I have to say this time in Egypt life was also a very rich time w when me and my generation, I, I, I would say, we, we really had that kind of charge that we want to do something for our country and mm -hmm. we appreciate what our parents and the elderly generation have been doing for yes, us. Yes, another principle that was installed also during for, for the, this generation is uh, the Arab solidarity and the Arab's unity that has led uh, definitely to the victory. Exactly. So where there is unity, there is at the end of the day the achievement. That's, that's a, a very good point you're touching on, the solidarity that made also the Arab appear as a big, strong power. And without that, the whole situation c could have gone uh, elsewhere. And, and speaking of this, I, I start to, to smell in the air something like that is, is being built up. The Arab countries are realizing, mm -hmm. and the whole world is realizing with them that something has to be done and they have a role to, to, to play in this regard. I, I want to say something about, about with this nice memory that, that you brought uh, with this question, is that it was still wartime and we visited an area that was full of landmines. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was actually, actually it, 
it was ceasefire but not complete in the war yes. so, so so the level of risk was very high and and as as simple but but uh, interesting as it is i remember like like i used to see in in the soldiers we, we crossed into sinai and i got some part of sand of sinai and kept it at home until today how valuable this is because this sand this soil this land many people have paid their life paid the price and yeah. paid a heavy price to mm -hmm. liberate yes definitely uh, as a professor at the university uh, dr nagib and you're dealing with your students and with the youth with the leaders of tomorrow how can we bring the, uh, the best out of them in the sense of belonging to the nation uh, i guess that this uh, whenever tested we find them yes. we find them supporting their country supporting their leadership uh, what more uh, in your opinion uh, I, I have to say to you, because this is a question that I even ask myself, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I felt in the past years that our young generation is busy with social media, mm -hmm. with, with, uh, d w which, which is n not entirely bad, with, with uh, some interest here and there, but they forgot or they don't have much what's happening in the country in their minds. To my surprise, a few days ago, and that was not instigated by me, I was so much uh, uh, warmed up by the fact that they know about the situation and the conflict, uh, and they, they had opinion. So, so you put it right, in times of difficulties, you, you would see, or in, in, in these heated times, they stand up and they would do that, and we have a role as a community and as a society to support them in, in understanding the situation and being a uh, part of it. So, and, and you would see it in, not only in universities, you would see it in, in schools, you would see it in, in working place. That's a message that they belong to this country and they have some duty and some role to play. Yes, uh, the letter that we have just aired, um, uh, Professor Nagib had sent also uh, lessons of victory lessons mm -hmm. of October. What sort of lessons do you think October Victory gave to the youth today? That's, that's another, I can talk about this for hours, but I would say very few things. To be very fair and very frank, Egypt during the October war was the side that has less armaments than the other side, less technological weapons, but they had a great and a much stronger weapon, which is their will. Mm -hmm their belief in their country, their willingness to sacrifice. Uh, you, you can hear about, and I'm sure you did, about so many stories how people sacrifice themselves. I, I, I want to, to share with the viewers that when uh, the late General Abdel Menem Riyad uh, was, was, was uh, martyred in 1969, many people in Israel have celebrated, and the Prime Minister at the time, Golda Meir, was so sad, and she told her cabinet at the time, I'm very sad because the Egyptians sent their front leader to the very first line and they are ready to die. These people are not joking. These people are going to cross. These people are willing to pay a heavy price. So the lesson learned here is that it's not only the material thing that you have, mm -hmm. your will, your planning. And it's leadership by example. Exactly. So the leader exactly. was the one at the forefront. Exactly. He was not at office. He was with his men. Exactly. Mm -hmm. he, no, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And in the very front line, yes. it's, it's nearby Ismaili. I still know yeah. the location. Uh, I, I will say one last thing. At that time, we were living in the beautiful area of Maniel, in front of the River Nile. In the morning, you would get, you, you would, and as a little boy, you would get up in the morning, see and hear people paddling because they were practicing how to cross the Suez Canal. And you would hear it in the morning because of their like cheering voices and so on. So I would see, uh, I did not only see the war as a boy, but I've seen this generation practicing and exercising as hard as it was in these difficult circ circumstances and succeeded. And that's why President Sadat was very right that it was a miracle by any scale, it's a miracle to cross the Suez Canal and, and destroy completely the, the Barleaf Line at the time. Yes, uh, President Sadat was very right and President Sisi was very right as well when he invested in the youth who are considered to be Egypt's treasure. Uh, for, uh, Actually, for it's tomorrow. his priority. Yeah. He said it so many times, Investing that's my priority.
yes, yes. Yeah. Investing in the youth because they are the generation that would carry that. Like, uh, since you made this nice similarity, like Sadat said, we would like to give our torches to the new generation. President Sisi said, we'll do the same. We want our generation next one to be a better generation, one that serves their nation and the world in a good way. Uh, definitely, and we are looking forward to uh, reaping the fruit through uh, our youth, through empowering them. Tahya Misr Bishababiha, Egypt, uh, long live Egypt, with, uh, of course, uh, its youth who are considered to be the real treasure. Thank you so much, Professor Dr. Mohammed Nagib Abu Zaid, our veteran politician and professor at AUC, who helped us out uh, definitely read uh, the headlines uh, that has happened. Uh, earlier in the day and up till this moment Nile TV International is bringing you events as they unfold minute by minute around the clock. Thank you professor. Thank you very much. With us. And I thank you dear viewers for joining us. I'm Taghirit Hussain. Many thanks for watching.